talk of full range colour, high fidelity viewing, lifelike images and uncompressed pixels ahoy, it can only mean one thing, the marketing machine for a new format is upon us. So to help all you guys and girls out, I will break it down here and the full article can also be read on my site, link below and on screen. That should not only help you choose the best option from player, console, GPU and TV, or even monitor, but remove most of the jargon and clarify it all. In some ways, this video is itself fully HDR ready. I have broken it down into some main areas as it should help segment the information and allow it to be referred to as and when needed. You can use the links in the description to jump straight to each section. So let's start with the players and what's changed. You only have one option if you want to enjoy the latest movies shot with HDR in mind or remastered, and that is a brand new player. No matter what player you have prior to 2016, it will not support this new medium, and that means replacing your current player, as the range on the market as of today is still quite limited. Now you can read much more online, but the short version is a new laser is required, along with newer hardware encoding for the H.265 high efficiency video coding that replaces the old H.264. Also the HDMI connection has changed, now supporting version 2.0, and vitally, the security encryption HDCP 2.2 that initiates the connection and stream from your output player, device, console, PC, etc. to your display. And to be clear and save any inevitable rip-offs, you do not need to buy a new cable. As long as it's Cat 2, it'll work absolutely fine with all new devices. Now, all consoles and GPUs outside a select few released this year only support the older 1.4 HDMI spec, and thus none of them could play the new format, which includes games along with films and streaming content. Remember, this is a dedicated hardware change. Now, right now, the best and cheapest player is, of course, the £249 Xbox One S, a cracking deal that comes just at the right time to do a PS2. With other UHD players costing more, this is my single choice if you are in the market for a player soon, which I still cannot believe how bad Microsoft have undersold and explained this new machine, which will be available in August. This will cover you for all your streaming options and Blu-ray, and it is Ultra HD Premium compatible, i.e. 10 bits, that I will cover shortly, but it will not have the market to itself for long, so please check back around launch for my in-depth hardware review. For now, movies are the big ticket for the format and you can buy a player from other manufacturers or just look for the UHD or Ultra HD logo to know that it will support your current Blu-ray library and all the impending treats incoming. This will obviously increase with the new PlayStation Neo, Scorpio and with new Nvidia and AMD cards this year from the 1070, 1080 and 460 to 480 range. TV options will be fulfilled with Sky's latest Q-Box here in the UK that offers up a great choice of viewing, recording and supports 4K streaming and later this year channels. But Netflix, Amazon and even the BBC all have content up already and or in the works so this will only expand and increase. If you do have any more questions then please ask in the comments below and I'll reply as soon as possible. Now 4K and refresh rates, this is a very obvious and easy one to explain and it simply comes down to the accepted spec of 4K TVs and media which is 3840 by 2160 which observant ones amongst you will notice is twice the size of a standard 1080 display and it gives you four times the amount of pixels. To be considered a UHD display, it will need to offer this or the other 4096 by 2160 but if it says 4K, UHD or the new Ultra HD Premium base, then it will have you covered in the resolution stakes. The new standard also increases frame rates allowing 60Hz or 60fps for movies and games at this new resolution. Now the old format can only support 24 or 30fps and that has now increased along with dual HD display which some TVs currently support with picture in picture. If you want faster than 60Hz though for PC etc then DisplayPort or DVI is still your only option for now at obviously lower resolutions just like the picture in picture. Now HDMI 2.0 can theoretically support 1080 at 120 hertz but no devices at present with hdmi support that but that may change as we move into this new standard now hdr it gets slightly more complicated from here in and this is due to the typical competing standards at this early point so with all the easier points covered now we come to the big question mark HDR range and its contentious change over the current spec of sRGB or Rec. 709 that HDTVs, consoles and PC have used for over the past 11 years or so. 
Now this changes, or more appropriately, increases to achieve a larger range than we currently have and closer to what our eyes can determine. This is not part of 4K TVs directly, but simply that manufacturers can now sell the new picture benefits which have a greater impression on viewers than the increase in resolution alone. Allow me to explain. One of the key factors, but not all, in a TV being classified as HDR is that it can accept, or at the very least, process a 10-bit colour range or greater and output an image. And this is where it will start to get more complicated, so I'll do my level best to explain this simply. If we take movies and current standard Blu-ray, then these are all encoded with 8-bit colour, true colour, for each channel within each pixel, totalling 24 bits per pixel. Now this gives 256 shades of brightness for every channel of the RGB value, and each pixel, from its darkest to its brightest, and like many things, bigger is better. Now some TVs can currently accept 10-bit colour, which is referred to as deep colour. Now this is per component or channel, as just explained from the RGB or RGBA source, meaning that for each pixel on screen it can have 30 bits, 40 if the alpha channel is used, and referred to as 30 BPP, bits per pixel, and 10 bits per colour or channel, referred to as 10 BPC. So at the base level we can now process and resolve two more bits per channel, increasing the pixel total from 24 to 30. Now this is the minimum a TV set has to process to receive the HDR Premium Consortium badge. This is just an organised group of TV manufacturers and companies who agree standards. The risk here is that it does not mean it can create a better image, or indeed, is the only requirement. It also does not mean that all TVs will adopt this, as Sony and Panasonic, for example, have TVs that are at or above the requirement, but will leave its current 4K branding for now. I know it can get confusing. Now this range can increase from 10-bit to 12-bit, which is the level that Dolby Vision requires and still fall into the same HDR branding, but for now we will concentrate on the level benefits across both as one. It will increase the colour spectrum from 16.7 million colours to choose from, now moving into the billion so a large increase. But what does this mean? Well, in simple terms, you will get a much more linear curve of colours from one end to the other, 1,024 shades minimum per channel, a four times increase, resulting in banding being reduced or removed completely, as we see colour gradients in real life. But it must have more, right? And yes, it does. Now, due to this increase in range called the gamut or colour gamut from the old spec, it allows richer and more vibrant colours to be displayed on screen at all times across every shade. Although this is shifted more towards the greens and blues than reds. Now, as you can see on screen now, the area the new REC 2020 standard takes over from the old REC 709 is quite substantial. And it will certainly be noticed and appreciated more than the increase in pixel density from a 1080 display mostly because you will notice it at any distance. Now, sadly, the new range of TV sets only has to satisfy 90% of this for now, which falls into the P3 category that I've highlighted on screen, but this will still deliver far more vibrant colours and deeper blacks, but this also offers another choice and standard requirement. LED versus OLED. You see, you have two distinct types of panels to choose from, giving you three options in total. Remember, plasma is dead, which makes a difference to the picture and also gives us the other benchmark needed to receive the Ultra HD Premium brand. And there are two of them, which cover the peak brightness and darkness. This is the scale from dark to light. It is called the contrast ratio, and it's not a new thing. Now, light is measured using nits, with one nit being the same as a single lit candle. Current TVs come in around or below the 500 nits. Now, LED screens need to have 1000 nit peak brightness and less than 0.05 nit peak levels to qualify. The REC 2020 standard actually goes up to 10,000, but not for these early TVs. Now, this covers both edge-lit LEDs and backlit LED screens, which, as the name suggests, have strips that run across the screen and light cannot have local dimming like backlight can, but they are cheaper to produce and thinner. Backlit have LEDs behind the panel and can now turn off each one as needed, so they produce a better contrast but at a greater cost. They both have a weakness though, as they shine a single light through a filter or coloured gel to give the colour. OLED is not the same. 
creating its own light for each color and each pixel, and as such, it has greater precision on color, edges, and of course, blacks, as the entire pixel is turned off, giving the deepest blacks you can get, but this comes at the cost of its peak brightness, which is lower than plain LED screens. The result is the altered minimum spec for OLED of 540 nits peak brightness and 0.0005 nits of black level. Now, algae have some variation on this, but contrast and clarity are its biggest strengths cost is not. Now the two standards are designed to compensate for the two types of panels and means that each TV can still support the format. LG tends to be the main pusher of OLED screens but they do cost an arm and a leg still no matter where you buy it from. They are also one of the main sets that support the Dolby Vision HDR level which the Xbox One S does not and most likely Neo and Scorpio will not also. But the higher standard is backwards compatible so any TV that supports 12 bit and Dolby Vision will support 10 bit and the Rec 2020 covers both along with the eventual 8K. Meaning if you have a Dolby Vision TV your device will work also. So where does this leave us then for what it will deliver and how it will improve? Well, it is really pointless showing examples of it unless you have a display that is HDR compatible. It's simply impossible to demonstrate. This is also borne out by some of the misleading advertising comparisons showing artificially reduced images. It suffice to say that in the right conditions, picture detail, clarity and tone are dramatically improved, but not guaranteed. You can see an estimate of what I'm trying to generate here. Now, this is simply due to the new standard offering up a greater range, but it is no brighter. Imagine when you try to read your phone screen in the sunlight. If your new TV is in a bright room or has sun or light from behind your viewing angle, then all this will be lost. Compounding this is the source material needs to be mastered for HDR, as does the screen. Even though you can play non-HDR material and source absolutely fine on these sets, if you do have the TV set up in HDR mode, it will affect non-HDR material, and this could annoy many, but I will cover that in more detail and depth at a later date. So what about games? And I've created a short video covering games and HDR along with an article that you can check out in the links on screen or in the video description below. Now I've simply done this because I feel this is enough information to digest for one article. Now as always I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this. If you did then please hit that like and subscribe button and support the channel as it really helps me immensely. Leave all your thoughts and more importantly your questions below. I will answer as often as possible. And you guys and girls take care and I'll see you very soon on the next one.